something that would be really handy to have when you're doing experiments with photoelectrics is a way to measure wavelengths of different sources like LEDs, laser diodes, things like that. And uh, a fella designed some software. It's pretty amazing. It's freeware. You can go on the inter internet and get it. If you uh, if you just look up Theramino spectrometer, you'll get a lot of links to it. There's quite a few guys that have done this, and uh, the fella that designed the software made it quite easy. What you use is um, an old webcam, and I found the the ones that work best for me are the old round ones that look like an egg. And um, what you do is you take the camera, and here's one remove the lens and inside this had an infrared filter here and um, I removed the filter that way it will measure some of the longer wavelengths this device in here the uh, the pickup is quite sensitive and it also has a lens in here and this is this is what you need you have to disable the LED which is just by unsoldering it you don't want the visible LED to come on when you're using this thing. And also I removed a microphone on it. And there's different styles. Here's another one that I removed the removed the filter. You have to be real careful. Some of the ones you want to avoid, one like this one. This one has the lens and everything, the filter all epoxied in place. You can't take it apart. There's no way to uh, to modify it without destroying it. On these there's screws in the back that if you remove these two screws this this uh, housing comes off and it allows you to get direct access to the uh, the filter this is the enclosure one thing I have to do next I'm gonna take two utility razor blades and I'm gonna make these will be mounted here and I'm gonna I'm gonna build an assembly that I can move these back and forth. It'd be one opposing this one and by moving them closer together or farther apart I can vary the width of the slit, the opening. I should say it's this way. And then I'll spray paint it black. Now the inside of this enclosure should be painted flat black, an ultra flat black. Um, to help absorb any light it has to be sealed any light that gets in is going to cause problems here I used to use Krylon ultra flat black which is really good and unfortunately I don't think they make it anymore but here's what I found that works perfect you can get it at Menards locally it's Rust-Oleum camouflage in ultra flat colors and this is this is black, camel black, Rust-Oleum. This stuff is really good. It's it's about as good as the old Krylon Ultra Flat Black, and you can spray it inside of, like I did in this housing here, or you can spray it in the inside of a telescope tube. You can take PVC pipe, spray the inside with this stuff, and it will absorb a lot of the extraneous light. So, if you can't get Krylon, this is the next best thing. Next we'll look at the innards of the spectrometer here. Here's a little more detailed view of the uh, innards of the unit here. Take this off the lid because the inside is all painted black. Here's the actual assembly that I constructed. It's basically a little turntable the webcam is mounted here. The diffraction grating is glued to a small barrel that fits over the lens. You can see here. So I can rotate it. When I find the optimum position, this will be fixed in, in place here. So I can focus the lens and I can rotate the diffraction grating. This clamp holds the assembly down. It's adjustable. 
on the bottom there's a small crank here where I can adjust the angle of the turntable and here you can see as I adjust that lever I can adjust the angle Of course the slit in the front, it's horizontal. And then I can adjust the table here to approximately 30 degrees off of this plane here. So that is a detail of how the inside of this was constructed. Here's a demonstration of the spectrometer, which is located here on the optics bench. And what I have is in this lamp holder here a compact fluorescent lamp. And the display on the computer here is the software that allows us to use this home brewed spectrometer here kind of crude but it, it tends to work I'll show you here in a second I'm going to turn on the compact fluorescent lamp right now okay if you look if you look on the uh, display here you can see the two calibration points that I'm using to calibrate this apparatus the two spectrum lines of mercury which are in this mercury lamp here are here and they are at 436 and 546 nanometers. Here you can see the response time. There's a little bit of a lag due to the latency on the computer. Four thirty six and five forty six using a compact fluorescent lamp to calibrate the uh, software here. Next I'm going to use a black light, fluorescent black light, and see if we can look at the spectrum of that. So here's the light. There's the black light. And holding it in front of the slit. Here you can see the spectral line here of this black light and it looks to be on this scale about 380 nanometers. Now this is fairly relative this isn't real accurate but it gives you an idea here. So looking at this 300 and 380 nanometers Next, I'm going to try this device, which I picked up at a thrift shop. I think it is used with um, cosmetics of some type. Um, I'm going to use it to erase EEPROMs. But anyway, these are these are UV diodes, LEDs. Let's see here. Okay, here's the spectral lines of those, and it looks like about 410 nanometers. So you can see the difference there. Here's an LED flashlight, white LED flashlight, shining it in the slit here. Now on the top, you can see the, the, what the camera is seeing, looking through the slit in the spectrometer, and this shows the spectral lines. And of course, positioning this is a little delicate. I should mount this on a on a support, and then I could adjust it for maximum here. But anyway, you can see here there's quite a bit in the shorter wavelength. Here we go, 500 and looks like that big peak there is about about 540, 540 nanometers. There's another peak lower 
at about four about 450 nanometers and another peak up near 600 just below 600 that's using an LED flashlight here's a green laser pointer and it's showing about 500 and almost 540 nanometers here's a red laser pointer about 670 nanometers if I can hold it steady here anyway once again relatively speaking this shows the scale here is 0 to 1000 nanometers back to the compact fluorescent light the wavelengths get progressively longer as you go to the right and you can adjust the scale here if you want to zoom in and you can move the scale either way here I can really zoom in you're starting to see the little data points here anyway the the fellow that developed this software my hats off to him is pretty amazing what you can do with um, just an old webcam and this enclosure here which houses the webcam and the slit on the front you can vary the opening here on the slit depending on the amount of light and the uh, resolution you want by decreasing it you can decrease the uh, increase the resolution here Well, this is one more tool that you can build yourself that will uh, give you more information when you're experimenting with optoelectronics. So go on the internet and check out Theramino Spectrometer and you'll get quite a few hits. And the software is freeware, so um, hats off to the fellow that designed this stuff. And using this device, you can calibrate it here with a compact fluorescent light to get your points and then on the screen you get your display so anyway that's that's it for this one today thanks for watching see you next time